Hello everyone, my name is Nick and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you three Canadian stocks that I've recently been buying on the dips and why I believe in these companies for the future. But before we get into the video, all I ask of you is to simply destroy that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really does help out my channel and it lets me know that you guys like content like this. And if you haven't already, definitely consider subscribing down below for more weekly investing content just like this. Anyways, without further ado, let's get right into these three Canadian stocks to add to your watch list. Alright, so the first stock that I I've been buying very heavily over the past few months is actually Suncor Energy with ticker symbol SU.TO. Suncor has been a long time hold in my portfolio, being Canada's largest integrated oil and gas company, meaning that their operations span from bitumen extraction all the way through to the Petro Canada pump stations. Now hold on, I know what you're thinking. Elon Musk is going to be taking over the world and there's going to be zero demand for oil in the future. But we all know that the transition to renewable energies is well on its way at this point, with Canada making its net zero carbon emissions goal for the year 2050. Although 30 years away, this is very concerning for Canadian oil and gas producers, but I do believe that Suncor stock does have a lot of room to run in the next three to five years. So getting back to the company, Suncor was hit extremely hard during the pandemic, suffering a devastating 65% loss from its highs in 2020. But then as we can see, ever since the vaccine announcement, Suncor has been tearing it up, but is still down about 25-30% to 30 from the early 2020 highs. Now in my own opinion, I truly believe that Suncor stock still has significant upside and here's why. First of all, let's take a look at oil prices over the past year. Less than a year ago from today, the price of WTI hit a low of $36 per barrel, whereas we can see it's been skyrocketing since to a price of $75 per barrel where it is today. And the last time we saw oil prices this high was back in late 2018, while Suncor's stock price was also at an all-time high of $55 per share. Now keep in mind guys, the current stock price for Suncor is sitting just below $30 per share, which means that there could be significant upside if the company can return to pre-pandemic profitability from a few years ago. Secondly, we need to look into Suncor's latest Q1 2021 earnings report. Now in the first quarter of 2021, Suncor was finally able to return back to profitability where they earned 49 cents per share while analysts expected only 32 cents per share. This came as a result of the company being able to increase their upstream oil production while dramatically reducing their operating costs. Here in the report it says Suncor's total upstream production increased to 786,000 barrels per day in the first quarter of 2021, compared to 740,000 barrels per day in the prior year quarter, on combined upgrader utilization of 97% and record in situ production. Together, the fourth quarter of 2020 and the first quarter of 2021 represent the best sequential SCO production performance in the company's history. And for those of you who don't know, SCO is synthetic crude oil. Then on the cost reduction front, it says in the first quarter of 2021, oil sands operation cash operating costs per barrel decreased by approximately 20% to $23.30 and Syncrude cash operating costs per barrel decreased by approximately 10% to $32.25 per barrel, compared to the prior year quarter due to a combination of increased production and improved cost performance. Now guys, this is absolutely incredible that Suncor was able to reduce their operating cost per barrel by 20% in their biggest production center, which is the oil sands. So if we take the current $75 per barrel that oil is trading at on the WTI market right now and subtract the operating cost of $23.30 per barrel during Q1 for Suncor. This means that the company is essentially profiting over $50 per barrel, which is very good to see considering that oil prices were barely above $25 during COVID. Not only this, but on top of the dividends that the company is already paying, Suncor is devoting two thirds of their additional earnings to paying down debt and one third to repurchasing the company's stock, which is very discounted in today's market. Thirdly and finally, I do think that Suncor stock has significant upside because I still think that there's going to be continued demand for oil as the economy continues to reopen. Clearly with the rising price in oil we are already seeing this demand increase but many companies are still requiring their employees to work from home as well as people still continuing their pandemic habits. But as cruise lines begin floating again and flights get to maximum capacities with people wanting to travel all over the world, I believe this will only continue to benefit the big oil and gas players including Suncor of course. Overall guys I just see Suncor as a staple to the Canadian economy and I think that it's going to be a company that will prosper for many many years and I do think that this current discount is providing an excellent opportunity for long-term investors who do believe in the reopening of the economy and the short-term demand for oil. 
All right, now moving on to stock number two that we have on the list here today, that is the Canadian National Railway with ticker symbol CNR.TO. Now many of you out there probably know that I absolutely love this company. I think it's one of the best companies on the stock market simply because of the moat that it has and it is probably one of the most well-protected companies in the entire stock market. Like just think about the difficulty in trying to compete with CNR unless you're already an established player in the railway industry in Canada. Like it's absolutely impossible to create the vast array of tracks and railway networks that CNR already has in place. And in my own opinion, CNR is the best run railroad in North America based on their stock price performance over the past 25 years. But recently CNR stock did take a dip and is still sitting about 10% off its all time high of about $149 per share Canadian, which I believe is presenting a good buying opportunity for long term investors and here's why. First of all, CNR is continuing to grow their EPS at a very healthy rate. So management is predicting 2021 earnings to grow at a low double digit rate throughout the year, which I do think is very good for such a large and established company already. But I should mention that the stock has been under pressure lately for two main reasons. The first being that EPS fell 4% in the first quarter from Q1 of 2020 as well as their merger with Kansas City Southern or KCS Railway. Back in April of 2021, CNR announced a superior proposal bid to CP Railway to purchase KCS for $33.7 billion, which would further connect Canada, the US, and Mexico with CN tracks. Now this scared investors because CP Rail had initially bid $275 per share for KCS, but then CNR came in at $325 per share to buy out the company, which was a significant premium to KCS's current share price. And guys, to truly understand the scale of this major acquisition, we have to take a look at CNR's current market cap, which is sitting at about 95 billion. So this would be over one third of the purchasing company's current size, which is absolutely astronomical. Personally, I do believe that this would be a benefit to the company over the long term because these two companies would have synergies that would be impossible otherwise if they were separate entities. But only time will tell if regulators will allow this deal to happen because it is like the largest railway in North America purchasing KCS, so we'll see how it goes. All right, now another reason to buy CNR right now is because of their excellent track record of dividend payments. Over the past 15 years, CNR has been consistently paying and increasing their dividends each and every year, which makes this one of the best dividend stocks in Canada. Currently, the stock has a forward dividend yield of 1.8%, which might not be the best, but they do also have a payout ratio below 50%, which means that the dividend is very safe and it has plenty of room to grow in the future. And finally, I've been buying CNR stock because it is a hedge against inflation. As of recently, we've all been hearing this talk about inflation potentially plaguing our economy because of all of this money being pumped into the market. But railroads are actually a hedge against inflation, and here's why. Because railroads in North America essentially operate as semi-monopolies, they have total price control over the areas in which they operate. Their customers are so reliant on them because there aren't many alternatives when it comes to large capacity transportation. This means that when the prices of goods and services rise, railroads can raise their prices to stay on top of inflation, which ends up benefiting them. So overall, railroads like CNR are going to prosper in any economic environment, which makes this company a long-term hold in my portfolio. Finally, guys, the third and last stock that I've been buying over the past few months is one that I haven't talked about on this channel before, and that would be Greenlane Renewables with ticker symbol GRN.TO. And I do want to give credit to Daniel Prong for introducing this stock to me, so thanks Daniel. Now I will mention that this stock is a slightly more speculative position of mine, so its relative weighting in my portfolio is definitely a lot lower than some of my others. But anyways, Greenlane Renewables is a company focused on cleaning up two of the largest and most difficult to decarbonize sectors, which are the transportation sector and the natural gas grid. Now today, Greenlane Renewables has the world's largest supplied capacity for biogas upgrading systems, and this stock is a pure play in the renewable natural gas sector, meaning that this is all the company focuses on. So to give you a little bit of background on what actually happens, basically when organic matter like manure, crop waste, food waste, wastewater sludge, or solid waste decomposes, 
they actually release carbon to the atmosphere in the form of biogas, which contains about 50 to 65% natural gas. And GreenLane has developed three key technologies to be able to capture this natural gas and purify it to be able to be used in the pipelines for heating homes or in the transportation sector for fuels for vehicles. And what makes this renewable is the fact that all of this carbon would be released to the atmosphere anyways, so by reusing it in pipelines and as truck fuel, we don't have to produce additional natural gas by means of bitumen extraction or whatever it may be, thereby reducing overall carbon emissions. Anyways, I am just giving a small introduction to this company, so you'll want to do more of your own research on the company before investing, of course. But now let's take a look at the stock and some of their financials. So as we can see, the stock is currently sitting 50% off its all-time high of $2.86, but the stock is still up 200% here to date, so I guess we can't really complain. However, I do still believe that this company is starting to show some value which is why I will be purchasing more of this company and have been over the past few months. Now to understand exactly why I'm deciding to buy this company now, let's first take a look at the company's financials and their overall revenue growth. So here we can see that GreenLane Renewables has cash of 37.5 million with basically zero debt, which is very good to see. As Peter Lynch says, it's nearly impossible for a company with no debt to go bankrupt, so that's always a good sign. In the bottom left of the chart, we can see that GreenLane saw annual revenue growth of 101% in 2020, which is astonishingly good growth and just shows that this company's products are good and are in high demand in the sector. In the top right, we can also see that the company is continuing to grow its revenue quarter over quarter as new contracts come in, which averages to 43% growth per quarter. Then in the bottom right, it's important to note that this company is not yet profitable, but is growing its EBITDA, which is the amount of earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization each and every quarter, which is a very good sign for future profitability. And then getting back to some of their other metrics, the sales order backlog and the sales pipeline, these confirm that there is demand for this type of service and does have a bright future ahead with $715 million of potential projects. Secondly, taking a look at the company's valuation, right now we can see that GreenLane is trading just above a price to sales ratio of six and at a forward price to earnings ratio of 47 based on analyst estimates. But even if we're just looking at the price to sales below seven with 101% revenue growth and zero debt for the company, this is looking quite attractive to me right now. And even analysts would agree having an average price target of $2.76 per share, which is nearly 100% above the current stock price. And finally guys, I do believe that this is only a temporary dip in the company's stock price because if we look at the entire renewable energy sector, basically all of the stocks are down over the past few months. And typically when we see a sector rotation like this, it doesn't reflect an individual company's long-term opportunities. Look at Canadian Solar for instance. The stock is down 35% from its high a few months ago. Even Brookfield Renewables stock is down 25% from its highs a few months ago. So I believe that this is just a short-term sector correction and GreenLane is definitely getting punished the worst because it is a smaller cap stock. But despite this company being slightly speculative, I would say that they have good long-term potential in helping companies and countries meeting their climate change goals. But anyways, that wraps up this video today, guys. Let me know what you thought of these stocks down below. I would really be interested to hear if you do like Suncor, CNR, or GreenLane. And if you have any other Canadian suggestions, definitely let me know in the comments down below. And I probably will make a video like this for the US stocks as well. So three stocks that I've been buying lately, and that will come in the near future. So as always, make sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys in the next one.